Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Calling All Devs, our weekly Q&A series where I take questions from you, the star citizen backer, and pose them directly to our star citizen developers. Sometimes we film on Halloween, and I am uh, 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 old disco. I, I waited until the last minute. All right, starting us off this week, we are going to none other than, surprise, surprise, Vehicle Pipeline Director, Mr. John Crew. John, two more ship questions. Are you ready? Yep, two more. There, okay, there, who's going to catch up with me at some point? Uh, uh, well, I, I fed Todd two last week, and when I called him, I, he was like, he did the one question. I said, okay, I need to give you a second one. He's like, why? He goes, because I'm trying to at least somewhat close the gap. So that John Crew doesn't just you know, just so so nobody just accuses me of abusing John Crew week in and week out. But, but they keep asking the ship questions. So and you're, you're the guy you got promoted. I keep answering them. You know you got to be a lot more like me. I never get promoted. Don't don't get promoted, John. <laughs> then you have to do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, first question: With the advent of system degradation in three three. Point X, will we get, the, they say 3.3.X, three, three but uh, will we be getting some kind of maintenance mechanic to either slow or partly repair the wear to a component, or at least some way to indicate how much time that component has left? Right, so that's, that's more than one question. That's about four in one. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's like a question A, question B, question C, so question 1A. Right. I'll try and go through them. So yes, there will be a little way of um, sort of stemming the wear and use and repair, like we've talked about, like repair as a mechanic and uh, fixing up items. So yeah, repairing them with your little repair tool or swapping out sub sub items will help stem that uh, flow. Um, next up, showing where um so actually on the power mfds at the moment we do have a little icon it's a little cog i believe mm -hmm. uh, that shows your current percentage of wear so that's sort of like an absolute this item is worn 27 percent um and at some point we'll have more in-depth mfds that give you more information on that the the tricky thing with giving a time left is it's completely tied to what you're doing your with current it, usage like, um, so we have something similar on the mobile class for your oxygen and it tells you how much oxygen you've got left and how long you can survive, which constantly changes based on what you do. So yes, if you're stood still, it tells you you've got this, this much time left. And if you start running around, that time is no longer valid anymore. So we'll have the same issues with wear. It might say you've got four days worth of wear left on this weapon. But if you suddenly get into a half an hour long strenuous dogfight mm. that you're constantly shooting, it's going to be significantly less than that if you've overclocked it even less. So, yes, we will have that stuff, but it's not going to be um, super predictive and accurate because we just don't know what people are going to do with it. Right. That's why we have, as the first step, the, like, the absolute wear indicator. So you know this item's 90% worn. I need to start thinking about swapping it for a different one. Yeah, I, I get it. Is that all of the bits? Yeah, that was that was all the bits. Uh, you know, we, we've got things. You know, uh, early stretch goal items like the like the AMX repair bot and uh, the, the, the the tuning kit. So the, uh, there's, there's there's lots of things that will that will eventually come online to help you tweak and 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 not just repair, but but tweak and condition and uh, uh, maintain. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, your your item components and of course you know. UI is the one department that touches every single aspect of Star Citizen. So, uh, as, as usual, our, the development of our features sometimes outpaces the UI uh, for them, since they're all spread very uh, spread all over the place. So, uh, so yeah. But you can see that cock. I yeah, you were mentioning it. It's in the Power MFD and then the cock, whatever. So yeah, you covered everything. Cool. Good job. All right. Second question. With the Merlin rework in three five, that's it's not really a rework. They're just doing some stuff to the cockpit, right? Yeah, it's it's we're not planning on giving it a, a full rework like other ships. It's more just bringing the cockpit into line with all the modern templates, the animation templates, so uh, and the screen visibility. Okay. Like uh, it does have a custom UI setup on it at the moment. I expect that to stay the same, um, but just like the amount of screen real estate, those the screens take up will be adjusted to meet the minimum standards. Gotcha. So with the Merlin cockpit adjustments in 3.5 and the Archimedes currently scheduled for 3.6, will their docking functionality be a part of their, well, they say reworks, but uh, the development uh, of those ships? 
I would not expect that to be the case. So docking will we're going to be working alongside the hull sea because I think I've talked about this in previous episodes. Why why the hull sea is not out and it's a few big pieces of tech needed. One is docking because uh, you need to have it docked to somewhere with all the cargo to be able to sell it because it can't land with all the cargo. So it's a pretty useless cargo ship without that functionality. Um, so the first stage of docking will be ship to station docking with the whole sea. And then the next level or tier improvement beyond that is ship to ship docking. So then like the Merlin Archimedes to the constellations, that's where that comes in. Right. It's like the, once we've got that basic level in, then improve it with the next one. Right. It, it's always important to remember that, that uh, ship development is not always in parity with the game system development. See the Reclaimer. Or he's a reclaimer not, uh, in salvage, or the starfarer and refueling, for that matter. So, so it, they're not always they're not always one one and stuff like that. So, yeah, docking will be developed independently of the work on the Merlin and the uh, Archimedes. All right, that's it. That's cool. all I got for you, man. Cool. Uh, see, we're, you're, you're coming to town next week, right? Yep, uh, fly out Friday. So, two days, three days ago from when people will see this video. So, right. when this goes live, I'll be out there. All right, man. I'll see, see you next week. See ya. Hi. Bye. All right, moving on from John Crew, a Calling All Debs All-Star to a Calling All Debs newbie. We are calling for the very first time Chris Campbell, lead lighting artist at a Foundry 42 UK. Chris, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing well. It's Halloween. It is. What you dress up as? Uh, I dressed up as a game developer going to work. I dressed up as an old community manager. <laughs> yeah, that also works. <laughs> All right, uh, I got a question for you, Chris. Uh, you, know, you may or may not know these are these are submitted by the backers and voted on by the backers each and every okay. week. And this question uh, rose to the top here. It says, "Is there a technical reason why ships cannot have stronger and they put in parentheses narrowly focused if needed headlights for seeing asteroids in the ground before running into it instead of these uh, broader lights uh, that, that tend to cover a wider area? Uh, they use." Yeah. They use a, a, a more uh, aggressive wording than I just used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, technically, there's no reason why we can't just slap on, like, a, a, a narrow, long-lasting kind of beam on any given ship light. Um, but up to this point, the ship headlights have been kind of a, an aesthetic kind of concern. But uh, now that we have more gameplay spaces with dark areas and stuff, it becomes a bit more of a, a gameplay question. Um, and so now I'm starting to take a look at these ship headlights and seeing how we can kind of massage them from being something that kind of, it looks cool in very specific situations mm -hmm. uh, to something that works for gameplay, doesn't destroy the visuals, uh, and, and feels a bit more kind of immersive. Gotcha. There's got to be some knock-ons, though, to, to it, it, everybody having a very strong, powerful, focused, you know, forward light, though, right? I mean, yeah. It seems yeah. like the opportunities for trolling would be... Uh, uh, immense if you had this really super bright headlight that, that, that you could then just like put into everybody's face yeah yeah exactly yeah i mean there's there's definitely performance concerns uh oh, yeah. with some of the options that we can do with headlights like uh, for example if you had a shadow casting headlight which would make sense uh because obviously if you're standing in it like a, a room or a landing zone uh -huh. someone flies up and shines their headlight through the window you want to see the nice shadows kind of casting through um, but unfortunately, that's it's very expensive to do that. Uh, uh, four kilometer the, <laughs> shadow casting. Yeah, light. for like a four kilometer long light uh, with shadow casting, then you're going to suffer both performance and the quality of those shadows. Um, so we need to come up with uh, different kind of solutions to do that. Um, yeah, right. one is to obviously turn off the shadow casting, uh, but then you have implications of like then the light will just shine through the ceiling and the walls, and it won't right. necessarily look good. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll have to find a a, a real solution uh, sometime in the future, but for now we're we're just trying to uh, to at least kind of balance it so that it works for gameplay. There might be some rough edges, but uh, ultimately it should be an improvement. Gotcha. Yeah, I was think I was thinking about everybody just shining these super bright lights in everybody's faces. Yeah, which would be a, interesting from a gameplay perspective. But the four K yeah. the four K shadow casting is is a it's a it's an easy to forget the scale of this game. Yes. In other in other games where you're looking at a jeep or whatever, you know the the headlights only have to go you know, X number of feet out in front of the Jeep. But yeah. because of the scale of our game, if, if, if you're t trying to see an asteroid bef with yeah. enough time before you, you, so you can move and not hit it, we are talking quite a ways out 
that, yeah, that, these, exactly. that these lights have to go. And if they're casting yeah. shadows, that would be crazy. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, I think most of the headlights uh, were, were reaching a range of about 100 or 200 meters, which, mm -hmm. you know, sounds, you know, kind of realistic as, as like a car headlight or something. But then when you when you consider the speeds that you're traveling at, that's just not not going to work. If there's an asteroid like uh, two kilometers in front of you, you just don't have the time to stop before you hit it or before you even see it. Gotcha. So that's yeah. something that you're playing with right now, actually. Yeah, exactly. So we'll increase the range. Um, as much as we can uh, reasonably and uh, and give a certain amount of brightness and fall off so that it feels nice and realistic uh, and uh, and hopefully that will cover most of the cases um, where you will where you'll need a, a headlight for a gameplay gotcha. you think those check-ins will make three three or three 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 five or three um, four? I'm or? I'm definitely hoping to get a, a more balanced pass in for three three five uh, but as for as for a proper headlight solution, that probably requires a bit more thought and right. uh, code and system support. Cool. Well, that's it, man. You did great. Cool. <laughs> all right. Congratulations Thank you. on your first calling on devs. <laughs> thanks. It was uh, it was nice and easy. <laughs> all right, man. I'll let you get back to work. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. All right, take it easy. All right. See you, dude. Bye. All right. Thanks so much. Now, oh, I gotta wear my headset. I would have been, oh, I am wearing my headset. Jesus crap. All right, last and certainly not least, uh, Dan Truffin, uh, systems designer at a Foundry 42 UK, lead systems designer, right, Dan? Right. Lead yes. System? Yeah. Hi, how you doing, man? Hi, all good. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a few weeks. Yeah, well, you know, we, we tend we tend to come to you whenever it's a, it's, 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 it's a big design question and Todd Pappy doesn't want to do it. <laughs> so... <laughs> One of those again. Yeah, so I got one of those again. Uh, here we are from the backers, voted on by the backers. Any plans to allow us to move from planet to planet or system to system while offline? The example that they give is I'm on planet X and I need to get to planet Y, but I have to go but I have to go to work and I don't have time. So can I like book a flight from one planet to another planet on like public transport? Meridian Transit or, or, or whatever, or Archimedes Flights or whatever, and then take off, go to work, come back, and suddenly I'm on another planet when I get back. Mm, what do we think? So that's, that's a, that's a, it's a tough one. It's something we've been discussing in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, the consensus is that not really, or at least not for now. One of the main reasons is we don't really want players to bypass con content mm -hmm. we will put dangers along the way there'll be risks involved there'll be opportunities happening as you travel from a to b even if it's a long journey uh we we don't want players to risk free just go like yeah i'm here now right. also being there what, what will you do with no ships <laughs> i mean yeah. if your ships are not there there's i mean there are a few things you can do while you're there but we need we need this logistic thing to actually be a, a risk reward thing. If I need to move from point A to point B, I need to bring my assets with me in order to be able to do stuff, and it needs to be risky. You need to need to protect yourself. Consider if if another player accepts that mission to move you from point A to point B, and that ship blows up along the way, will you be happy with that? Right. What 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 will happen? You'll be really annoyed. You lost basically a <laughs> life. Exactly. Just because someone messed up, and they can mess up just to mess up with you, because they they might do it on purpose, and Fair we enough. need to. We can't really allow that stuff. Fair enough. So, whether we will look o over this in the future, we'll have to see. Well, if if there's a need for this type of thing, maybe we look into it and find other ways to kind of offer the same facility, but in different ways. But right now, we'd rather have you guys at least experience the content and go through the world and move through the world realistically rather than hey now i'm here now i, I i'm there when i get back from work right no yeah, if you want to want to leave your computer open and uh, step onto someone's ship and when you get back from work you step out of someone's ship and hopefully you don't get killed along the way your friend doesn't get his ship blown up along the way fair enough but <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's being in space is risky business. Just, 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 just point your ship towards Crusader and press number lock for auto run. Ooh, no, no, no. That's also something. <laughs> yeah. All right, All right Dan. Well, I think that I think that makes sense. I I I, I think that's a. Uh, I think you did well. Thank you so much. Oh. What, what what else are you working on? Anything cool? 
trains, right? Oh, uh, right now, uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of taking over the the team that right now is doing trains, and uh, it's uh, right now we're kind of after we show them in SeasonCon, we're kind of cleaning up a lot, and we're trying to make sure they integrate well with other systems. We're looking into the procedural team, also kind of working with us to to get tracks procedurally generated through throughout cities or elevator shafts in a, in a, like truck stops getting procedurally generated based on certain rules and the trains just functioning we just click the button station gets generated and automatic has all the elevators or trains built into it so we don't have to do extra man- manual markup so it's going to speed things up a bit hey, I, yeah. I, I, I love trains I, i'm not I've, i haven't been shy my, one of my favorite moments of the entire uh, uh, playthrough at citizen con was when the train pulled out of the station and you got to see lauraville there's something i mean lauraville's impressive i mean it's super impressive on its own but there's something that you really get put into a place when you can have an experience that you can relate to in real life and being on a train and, and seeing something out through the windows of of, 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 of a train so i don't know why it's some for some reason it made lauraville seem a little more real to me yeah, if that makes sense. You're know. actually traveling through the space rather. We could have done it easily where you go like you get into a train, you get instantly teleported on the other side, which mo- most games do. Mm-hmm. And But no, Chris Chris was adamant on this. He <laughs> no. was like, no, this needs to travel, needs to go through the space. You need to look out the window, understand where you are at every point in the journey. So I remember I was I was in those means when he said that and everybody was like, ah. but <laughs> I'm so glad it happened. Yeah. All right, man. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, well, right. Thanks. Bye bye. Take care. Well, that about wraps up this week's show. Special thanks to John Crew and Chris Campbell and Dan Truffin for being here on the show with us this week. Remember, you can submit your questions for consideration each and every week up in the thread, up on Spectrum. And don't forget to vote. That's the two-pronged plan. you got to submit your questions. you got to vote on your questions. There will be a brand new November thread by the time you watch this. So get your questions in there and vote for which ones you want to see answered each and every week. So for Calling All Devs, I'm Content Manager for Global Video Production, Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next week, everybody. The beard won't, though. The beard, nope. That's like, ah! Four score and seven years ago. Can we, can we do this? Ah! 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 Never again. Never, never again. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.